So, it's the other. Yeah. Okay, so what we had to do was on some of them, since we only had half inch cuts, we had to make one inch thick magnets. So these are the oddball two magnets that we left out of the wheel. All right. Because they don't quite They're fit. Not quite and we had, size, yeah. yeah, we had just enough to do this. And you can see these are solid. Yeah. And then you'll see one come around that's split right there. Right there, yeah. Yeah. So there's two sets of split magnets mm -hmm. that are bonded together. And that's the only one in here that's split. Right. Now, yeah. in all, in everything that I do, Pat, and I do with Tom Bearden, I pretty much make public. So if you look very carefully, you can see that these magnets, there's a piece of aluminum along each side of the magnet that's screwed in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do see that. This is going to rotate. So the magnet is inset into the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it doesn't have a strong field, it does. Yeah. It, the field's all the way out here, so it's kind of hard to hold it. But yeah. They're inset in the wheel just like this. And so these pie shapes are rotating around, and there's a reason for the shape. Mm -hmm. Because we want the magnetic field to regauge this much larger at the back than we want at the front. And that, and so what we do is we come in with that sharp pulse, if you look right there, that this goes through the center of the magnet. Okay. Okay? Now, you're probably asking yourself, these are also magnets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the bottles. And they're also magnets. Right. right. But anyway, let me just finish with this. Okay. And we'll jump right down here to this. Okay. What happens? is that little impulse, this little blue light, when you see the first spike. Mm -hmm. And then you see a steady blue pulse. Right. The magnet generates its own energy when it flips its own pulse. So that's the long part of it. Yeah, so it's like a double, right. double fraction of a second, like almost a second. And the thing that's very important here is what you're actually looking at here is probably one of the most nonlinear fields that's being brought together. It's nonlinear in the beginning, and then it goes linear when it flips. Okay. All right? Okay. Which means it has a motor force after that. And that's what you see driving this wheel around. You notice it's a constant RPM. Yeah. So you were saying about the flashing. Okay, the little, the little blue light. This is the little initial firing, uh -huh. a little bitty spike, right? It's really? not a pulse of energy. It's more like this, this thing, where a pulse of energy might be like that. Oh, I see. All right? So we've changed it to just be this width. So it's a spike. Okay. In that spike, when you when you first see this spike appear, you see this double little spike. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you see the blue glow and right. stay glowing. Right. That's at the point that it, it you can see the wheel shake yeah. when it's on the dot. Okay. And and why it does that is the magnets these magnets are north in this direction and they're south in the other direction. So north on this side so, and south on this so side. So we're stationary, aren't we, Pat? Oh, okay. In the wheel. Yeah. So we come by, we hit the barium ferrite magnet mm -hmm. with with these poles in this arrangement. Right. And we hit this barium ferrite magnet and what we want to cause it to do is send the little signal in here and make the magnetic material inside flip poles. Okay. So it does it really quick. 
and that's the shaking you see because it wants to turn around on there and it can't turn so it just shakes okay yeah all right so you understand that now yeah and so the next thing that happens is it gets it get, gets the impulse here right mm -hmm. gets that little impulse and it shakes see it but when it turns itself around it's attractive because this is still energized and that's the energy that's coming from the flip and the magnet, the long blue pulse. Okay, yeah. That's the motor itself. That's the force that's pushing this wheel. All right? All right. So if we stop, if we slow it down, I get my arm in there. I had my arm in there before. <laughs> to where it has to really work. Now, here's, here's the problem. Here's the engineering problem. If, if we just tell the motor to slow down, right? Mm -hmm. Let it come across the pole. These are magnetic locks in this condition. Yeah. In other words, they're being attracted into the iron down here. Okay. This iron pole right through here. See? Yeah. And so what you're watching now is when it hits that little spike, see it shake? Watch. It's when the magnet flips around. Okay. You can see it shake. It can't flip over on the board. You follow right, me? Right, right. So watch it real close and it'll shake. It doesn't seem to shake right there. It seems to shake just past it. Yes, it does because it 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 stores that and then flips. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's why you see that happening. Now, here's the problem. You have this big lever that's six feet, mm -hmm. right? So the the force out here can be very little and the torque in here can be very great because it's a lever, right? Right. I've got 2,000 pounds here and I've got an ant lifting the 2,000 pounds. Yeah. Well, that's easy for this wheel. Yeah. See, this way. But now what about this lever? Uh-huh. Yeah. It goes directly to the shaft, right? Mm -hmm. And this lever has to, it's a lever like this. Yeah, it's very short, yeah. Yeah, so it has to be enormous in torque to lift that, that direction. Yeah. See? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so the only way to do that is to re-gauge and get the energy out of the magnet. So that's why, that's why you designed it like that. Yes. Yeah. And also, that when I start the motor, what will happen is this is the, the motor force at this speed. Mm -hmm. So anything over this speed, this motor will be off and become a generator. Okay. You understand? Because it has the north and south poles all mm -hmm. the way around and it has 10 poles. And it has, I don't want to leave this out for everybody, each one of these coils has 2,206 turns of number turns? 18 wire on it. Turn it that way? No, way no, that's how many turns of magnet wire on each coil. The net, you just yeah, you turn them on the a bobbin, right? Perimeter. Right. Yeah, okay. And so, they're in series. All right. And when it's in this condition, five of them, it can only fire five little spikes as it turns around. And each one of those little spikes, right, okay. is firing there and the dot. So what happens to the other one each time? It just... Just passively... No, it becomes the opposite pole. And when the magnet flips, it attracts it in. Okay. See? Okay. All okay. right, so, next thing is the switches. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. what the switches do. When this switch is up, it is reading. Do you want to read that? What's it say there? It's at the top of the green. I can't see what it says. Yeah, but it's in the charge, right? Yeah. yeah so it's charge. above the green. Yeah. That's a 36 volt current meter. Mm -hmm. In other words, it requires real power to keep it there. It's not a digital meter. It's not one of these. Okay. It's an analog meter. Yeah. So that means that you have to supply power. So it loads a battery to, to read it. So right now that this is charging these batteries? Right now, no. It's telling you that the primary batteries are above 36 volts. Oh, okay. And they're in the green. So this is telling us that the primary batteries are ready for operation mm -hmm. to run the machine. Okay. Because they're not really supplying what they could supply. So were they here. were they running the machine before? No. No. Okay. All right. So when I push the switch downward, I'm looking at the recovery battery. Now remember so earlier. Three position switch. Yes. Okay. Yes, zero off in the center because mm -hmm. you don't want to burn the energy keeping that meter on because it will. Okay. Probably a little bit more than your car radio takes. Okay. This is showing you the recovery battery. Mm -hmm. Now here's the important thing. If you s flip the switch yourself, yeah. John doesn't want to touch it. You want me to switch it? Well, I want you to read the meter and tell me which one's higher. The bottom position or the top position? Right now, I think it's the bottom position, but let's see. Yeah, the bottom position is higher. Why is that? This one's getting more? Because when this, see, everything returns out of here through these wires. We just put them in the frame mm -hmm. so they wouldn't just be all over the place because we don't get them tangled in the wheel, but they're right here, see? Right, I saw that, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just in the gap here. so remember Tom Bearden talked about the zero FADOC current, the current that surrounds the wire. How do you spell FADOC? FADOC it's just zero phi, excuse me. Oh, okay. Phi, all right? Delta Phi. I think that's what it is. <laughs> anyway, there's too many of those formulas. <laughs> yeah. so, so, that current has no mass to it. It's massless. Right. And that's what's flowing right now in the whole system and being collected here. Because if we turn this meter on, That meter says that there's 38.1 volts in that capacitor. There's 36 volts here. So this is two volts over the... Of course. Yeah. So it's just maintaining that with no current. So it's a current that's massless. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. So what do you do with a massless current, right? Well, a massless current can do a motor function mm -hmm. with enormous amounts of power because it's drawing its energy out of space, out of time. That's why Tom says that it's a time charge. So all you have to do is trigger the active vacuum correctly and you'll get this motor function. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to move on to, to triggering a little bit more out. So the first thing that I actually want to explain to everybody is this coil is the master. Yeah. And this master coil has about 150 to 200 pounds of wire on it. Wow. And that's quite a bit of wire because each one of these spools weighs 80 pounds. It has a three inch core. 
It's made of welding rod. You can see it here. And the reason that we use